Many years ago, when I was an undergraduate in engineering school at Virginia Tech, uh, when I was doing homework, first thing I did was I listed all of the given information. What is the coefficient of friction? Do we are the effects of wind resistance to be considered or not? Uh, are we talking about standard temperature and pressure or something else? Basically, it's just an inventory of all the relevant facts. And doing this helped me identify what I knew and separate from what I thought I knew. I still do it today when I have to tackle a complicated problem. As Arlington readies itself for Amazon's HQ2's arrival in Crystal City, National Landing, I have to wonder how much of what I've heard is true, how much is exaggerated, and in the age of fake news, I have to assume that some of the things are flat out untrue. We all, want, we all want what's best for Arlington. And being good citizens, we want to anticipate the unintended consequences. But analysis and speculation are pointless without knowing the facts. Today's Amazon program is for us to learn from the sources about Amazon HQ2. Specifically, what's coming to National Landing? What can we expect as a direct result of HQ2? As much as possible, I'd like to contain tonight's discussion on just that, the direct impacts of HQ2. Of course, there will be secondary impacts on housing prices, traffic, infrastructure, public schools, and other things that affect us deeply. Rest assured that we at the Arlington Committee of 100 will address those downstream effects once they're better known. Returning to, to tonight's program, we have two great presenters who can speak authoritatively about Amazon's HQ2 and what's really a milestone moment in Arlington's history. First, we have Stephen Murray. Uh, Mr. Murray is the president of, and CEO of Virginia Economic Development Partnership. Besides Amazon's HQ2, VEDP, VEDP under Mr. Murray's leadership, is launching a world-class customer workforce program along with Virginia Community College System. Uh, at a previous position for the state of Louisiana, he led business development efforts and built higher education partnerships that helped secure a wide variety of projects in urban and rural areas, including software, IT centers for Fortune 500 companies, food agriculture processing facilities, and a few of the largest FDI projects in U.S. history. Collectively, these projects totaled more than $62 billion in capital investment. Mr. Murray earned a bachelor's in mechanical engineering at Louisiana State University and an MBA from Harvard Business School. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Stephen Murray. Awesome. Well, good evening, everyone. <clears throat> It's great to be back in Arlington County. Um, two things I should tell you before I start. One is that uh, I am a former resident of Arlington County. Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> 16 years ago, uh, I got married. Uh, my wife and I met in Boston, and uh, we moved uh, here to Clarendon, which was uh, in the sort of early stages, or I guess mid-stages of its renaissance. Uh, lived in a townhouse in Clarendon Park, uh, so I'm very fond of the, of the county. Is there Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, can you hear me now? Is that better? No? Oh, louder. Even closer. Okay. Is that better? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I, I was just saying I used to live in Arlington County many years ago and very fond of the, of the locale. The other thing I should just say in starting is what uh, an incredible economic development team uh, that you all have here with Victor Hoskins and Christina Wynn and their whole team. Um, someone was just asking us at the table, like, what was the highlight of the whole process for us, that 14-month process, and uh, Victor absolutely had the right answer, which was collaboration. It was really an incredible partnership, so I really thank you, Victor, for being such a wonderful partner. <clears throat> you guys have an absolute pro uh, with Victor Hoskins. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about Amazon in Virginia, a little bit about the process, how we approached it, and then I'm going to turn it over to our, my dear friend, uh, Victor Hoskins. I'm, I'm talking right into it, I think. I'm going to stay right on top of it. Okay. Okay. So uh, first of all, Amazon in Virginia today, one thing that's important to know is this is not a company that's new to the Commonwealth. 
Uh, we are, I think, roughly Amazon's second biggest uh, location in the Commonwealth today. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. yeah can you hear me? Whoa. Okay, that's better. Yes. Okay, I'll turn the other one off. Um, <clears throat> Virginia is Amazon's, I think, roughly second biggest state already. So this is pre-HQ2. We have about 10,000 Amazon uh, employees in the Commonwealth of Virginia today. Um, they've invested close to $30 billion uh, in Virginia data centers, uh, distribution facilities. Last year, actually year before last, I guess now, we announced the East Coast campus of Amazon Web Services. This has been a great uh, Virginia uh, corporate partner for many years. Uh, as you know, we went through a, <clears throat> a pretty extensive site selection process. If you sort of think about what it would take to win the Olympics, uh, I never did the exact comparison, but this is like winning many, many, many Olympics all in one in one time because it's not just a huge economic impact; it's a huge economic impact that goes on year after year after year uh, versus one you know big single uh, effect. Uh, we started uh, September seventh of uh, twenty seventeen. Now I guess about fifteen months ago, we had six weeks <clears throat> to put together uh, a proposal. One of the things that we told our state leaders right off the bat is this is going to be. Uh, probably the most competitive, most sort of coveted uh, uh, project and competition that we will ever uh, experience. And we've got to take this seriously because there's going to be a lot of great uh, competitors out there. What you may not recall is that while while Virginia was considered a favorite for much of 2018, uh, when, the, when the RFP first came out in, in 2017, again you know, about 15 months ago, almost nobody picked Virginia or D.C. Uh, the New York Times picked Denver. Uh, Moody's Analytics came out with an analysis of the top 10 markets. We were not in the top 10. Uh, others picked Boston, uh, Austin, Dallas, uh, other places. It was not until uh, January uh, when they down-selected to 20 sites and there were three in the D.C. metro area that people thought, oh, that suggests there's a lot of interest in that area. And of course, when it gets down to D.C., Maryland, and Northern Virginia, I think that's kind of an easy choice, uh, even though we are, we're very fond of our partners, but we're very proud of what we offer uh, in Virginia. One of the things important to know here in Arlington is that uh, when we began the process, we knew what the criteria were, but we didn't know exactly how they would weight things. And so we were very, um, we basically Northern Virginia in general was off the charts uh, on almost every criteria except one. And the one criteria where it was not as strong was cost. You know, this is one of the higher cost markets in the country. And so it was very important to us initially for a variety of reasons. We actually proposed three different uh, regions. So Northern Virginia, uh, Greater Richmond, and Hampton Roads, 10 sites altogether. Um, one of the most unprecedented things about this project was that um, the, the localities in Northern Virginia, specifically Arlington, Alexandria, Fairfax, and Loudoun, for the first time, I think, ever partnered together for one regional proposal. And so the state and those four localities put together a team, a team that would ultimately represent 500 people to make the case uh, for Northern Virginia. Uh, we submitted that proposal, really a world-class proposal, a custom website, a custom video in six weeks. Uh, we waited for a while. They went down to 20 markets in uh, January of last year, uh, three in the metro areas. So we had a pretty good feeling uh, about our chances at that point. Went through several different selection rounds and ultimately uh, got selected for half of it. I guess they ended up splitting it between New York and, um, and, and Northern Virginia and Arlington. Um, one thing I think is important to say, and I try to mention a lot, um, we are super proud of the work that we did last year. Uh, but in a way, Virginia won this project over the last few decades, right? I mean, last year was a really important effort. Uh, but there are so many great things about the Commonwealth that we had. Uh, we were able to have this great story to tell, legacy of good governance, you know, one of the best states uh, for business, one of the best managed states uh, in, in the country, AAA bond rating. Uh, the recent, um, a few years back, the regional transportation funding solution. As bad as you may think traffic is here, uh, this region is doing much more to address its traffic issues and its transit issues than many, many other places around the country. One of the most interesting things that we saw in going through that project was that uh, you think about the challenges of the metro, we were actually much better off than almost any other system, particularly uh, with the new efforts. There are many, many other reasons, and for the interest of time, I'm going to keep going. Um, <clears throat> important to know that legacy really positioned us for success. Uh, ultimately, two locations 
when they first announced we're talking $100,000 per job, ultimately $150,000 uh, per job average. Uh, there's a, a committed phase of 25,000 jobs, a potential addition to 37,850 because they've only committed the 25. I'm going to focus on that uh, today. A few things about Amazon by the numbers. Uh, perhaps the most important single thing, this is an opportunity to diversify the economy of Northern Virginia and Virginia as a whole. Uh, in many ways, one of the biggest, really the single biggest catalyst for the Virginia economy has been the federal government directly and indirectly, but it's also been a challenge because we get too uh, over-reliant on that. Uh, Amazon is not coming here to do federal government work. They do a lot of federal government work, certainly through AWS, but our incentive package for Amazon is conditioned on no more than 10% uh, of this headquarters being engaged uh, with federal government activity. So a big diversification opportunity. Uh, if you think about the scale of the project, uh, if you add up together every automotive assembly plant ever announced in the South and you put them all together, this is about that same number of jobs, 25,000 jobs. Two and a half billion capital investment, six to one return uh, on our state incentive package. Uh, this project alone will close, uh, actually it's more now than more than 25% of the entire gap to get back into the top 10 states for growth, tremendous amount of new revenue, and it'll strengthen our uh, bond rating. Um, one of the things that we did that was very different than most states is that while we certainly offered a competitive incentive package, it was one of the smallest ones uh, in the country, what we actually decided to invest in or proposed to invest in with our state leader support is that most of what we would do would be investing in improving our, our competitiveness, uh, transportation infrastructure in the region, but then especially an enormous investment uh, in higher education uh, to more than double the talent pipeline coming out of our universities in computer science, computer engineering, and software engineering statewide. Roughly half of that will be in this region with George Mason University expanding both at its main campus at undergrad at its uh, graduate campus in Arlington, uh, and then also a brand new innovation campus of Virginia Tech. Phase one will be a billion dollars for that campus in Alexandria, uh, not far from here. Um, that campus, the state is providing about 250 million of the total. They're gonna raise the rest from private and other sources. This was a very distinctive approach. As far as we know, no other state in the country uh, pursued it that way. Uh, just to give you a sense of why the focus on that particular talent was so important. Um, with the beauty of LinkedIn, we were able to pull the um, social media profiles for all the folks that work at Amazon's uh, HQ1, if you will, in Seattle. And then we looked at just the folks uh, in tech jobs. Roughly half of the people that have tech jobs at Amazon, software development, engineering, so forth, have a degree in computer science. I mean, it's just hugely important. That's why we put so much uh, focus there. Uh, quick recap of the package. Uh, assuming 500, I'm sorry, assuming 250,000 jobs, that would be $550 million in incentives paid post-performance. Everything is after they performed, only after they perform. Up to $1.1 billion across the different higher education investments, $195 million for transportation infrastructure, and an additional $25 million uh, for computer science investments in the K-12 um, curriculum. Um, uh, there are several different transportation infrastructure projects I just wanted to highlight here. The two that will be accelerated are Crystal City uh, East Metro entrance, a new entrance, and the Potomac Yard Southwest entrance. There's also some other improvements that are envisioned. Uh, lastly, I'll just summarize some of the major points. A transformational opportunity for diversification and innovation, uh, retention of our college grads and reversal of our out-migration trend for the, the first time in a long time that we've had experienced net domestic out-migration of talent. This is going to flip that around. Doubling our tech talent pipeline, post-performance incentives, our very first dollar of incentives will be paid in fiscal year 2024, several years uh, from now. Uh, transportation commitments to address some of those issues. Uh, the higher ed investments would be worthwhile even without Amazon. Uh, even after you include all the incentives and all the new investments to support K through 12 enrollment, which is a formula-based thing, we'll get about 1.2 billion at least in new general fund revenue uh, over the, the deal term. Uh, one of the most important things to us and to our partners is that the, the location selected uh, already has existing community growth plans in place and envision far more growth uh, than Amazon will bring and growth very much of the character that they'll bring, transit-oriented, mixed-use, walkable uh, development. Uh, we're making investments at the state and local level to address uh, traffic and affordable housing, uh, huge new investments in uh, K-12 and higher ed. Some of that will be outside Northern Virginia. And finally, of course, a winning package for far less than many others offer. Uh, looking forward to the questions later and looking forward to the comments from my colleague, uh, Victor Hoskins. Next we, oh. Uh, next, we have Victor Hoskins, the Director of Arlington Economic Development. Uh, he worked with Stephen uh, and his VEDP team to successfully attract Amazon HQ2, as you know. Uh, under Mr. Hoskins' leadership, 
The county has successfully implemented an innovative strategy that has moved it toward technology and private sector commercializations. Uh, other recent successes include Nestle, Applied Predictive Technologies, Deloitte, Phone to Action. Uh, previously, Mr. Hoskins worked in private real estate uh, investment on Wall Street. Uh, moreover, he served as the Deputy Mayor of Economic Development in the City of D.C., where he turned the economy around uh, with projects like the Wharf and City Center. By the way, if you haven't been there, you really should take a look. Uh, during his career, his work has resulted in almost 280,000 jobs and has led teams that have negotiated over 700 major business deals, resulting in billions in private investment. He holds a master's degree in city planning from MIT and a BA with honors from Dartmouth College. Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Hoskins. First of all, I want to thank you very much for that kind introduction. And it's very difficult to follow uh, Stephen Moray. Now, Stephen Moray is he is, un listen, I've never met anyone in economic development as patient, as kind, um, as intelligent, um, and we work together a lot of hours over this 14 months, and he talks, of, and, I, and the first thing I said was collaboration, but he set the tone for it across the entire state, and I want to thank him and his team for doing that. That made a big difference. I, I believe it's now our, um, our greatest competitive edge. I, I have to say that I'm honored to work here in Arlington County. I love this county. Um, I, I, I love the people that I work with. Um, you are the brightest um, residents and constituents I've ever worked for in my career, which means that <laughs> which means that it's really hard to work here. <laughs> But, it, but it's always dynamic, it's always a lot of fun. I mean, I, I was talking to someone the other day about sidewalks and, and she had a um, PhD in astrophysics and she was retired from NASA. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm talking to you about sidewalks. I'm outgunned, okay, I'm done. <laughs> but, but we really had a great time doing this project. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these slides and a lot of what, uh, what Stephen talked about, um, you know, is, is on this slide, a lot of the same content because we worked on the same project. But I wanna I want make a point about this whole process. What was so critical about this process? It forced us to work together in a different way. It forced us to share information. It, it really created um, a unified brand uh, for not just in, uh, Northern Virginia, but really for the state. Um, and really, it played well for Arlington County, really above everyone else, because of our relationship now with Alexandria. And I would say this, four years, before, four years ago when I came here, Alexandria was not liked by Arlington. National, the NIS, NIST, NIST was, was, was going, and then boy, and, and patent trade, et cetera. And I told my staff, I said, look, I said, you do not want to have a neighbor that hates you. I said, you, you want to have a neighbor that loves you. I said, we're going we're gonna to work with these folks. And, and look at it now. I mean, this is four years later, and it's, it's night and day. But collaboration, not just between agencies, but also all the departments across the county including, so it's all the departments across transportation, housing, but it spilled over into schools, uh, you know, into the Arlington schools, it spilled over into the university system, GMU and Virginia Tech. It is unparalleled. It is now our really our strongest competitive advantage. Had we not won Amazon, we are in a greater position than we've ever been before. Next slide, how do I? Oh, that it? There you go, yeah. So, so this, this, the whole national landing, so I can get this out of the way. National landing is a marketing term. <laughs> okay, it's not renamed, it's a marketing term. But we had to have a, we had to have a brand that actually trans, like, transcended our borders. Because we were Arlington and Alexandria separate. We had to have something that, the, the companies don't care, it's a market to them. So we had to have something that unified Pentagon City, Crystal City, and Potomac Yards all into one thing, and that's why that was used. And it's really a marketing term, and we may continue to use it as a marketing term, but it's, the names aren't going to change. Um, the fact that it was right next to the airport, um, you know, so close to downtown, um, didn't hurt us. The district is divided basically into three parts. The North District, which includes, I mean, you, know, I'm, you guys are probably familiar with Longbridge Park, um, and not far from there is Boeing, but um, that's the section that uh, will have um, really the major development. I'll, I'll talk about that more in detail later on. The first phases will happen in the Central District. There, there are three buildings. Um, they are all vacant right now. They have been vacant. Um, over there it is, I'm sorry, I, I, Crystal City people, please do not be offended. It's dead. It is just dead. Don't go there at 5 o'clock. There's nobody there. This is going to bring life to it. You know, one thing that Amazon, one of the guys from Amazon said, you know what, this is the perfect place to build our project. But, you know, because there's no spirit here. 
We're going to bring life to this thing. And, that, and that's really, look, you've been there. I, I hate to be it. It's the only haleo you can go in without a reservation. Um, and, and, then there's, and then there's, of course, there's Potomac Yards down at the bottom, um, and that's where the tech campus is. Um, you know, again, National Landing was really the marketing term, and it really helped us kind of get this, this one single brand image. Um, the development itself, so it will be a $2.5 billion investment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, that the, the yellow area is where the first phases are going. Um, those are renovations. It's three buildings, about a half million square feet. And then the rest of the development is just north of there, and Potomac Yards and, um, and Met Park. And those sites are actually going to be developed about four million square feet of development. This area lost uh, 24,000 employees since 2001. Amazon's bringing 25,000 employees. Guys, the infrastructure is under, underutilized right now. I had someone tell me, I don't want anyone else on my train car. It's called mass transit. You have mass, mass, mass transit, more than one person. Um, so you can't have a private car anymore. I mean, the things that people are upset about are just silly because it's empty right now. So I like to admit the truth. <laughs> And then, of course, the Virginia Tech campus down south, a billion dollars in investment is going to be fantastic. Um, I, I've already kind of walked through the deal itself, but, but this is to give you an idea that what we're, one of the things that we're trying to do, and, and we have to thank the Crystal City bid for this, um, we're really trying to unify um, you know, parts of the, the, the kind of the east part with the west part. Um, so we're going to work on Route 1, working with the, the state uh, on Route 1 to bring it and make, bring parts of it down, but really to make it more pedestrian friendly, make it more walkable. It's an incredible, walkable, accessible area, probably really the most, the most accessible in the entire region. We have VRE, we have WMATA, we have the airport, we have a bus, we have bus rapid transit, we have everything you need. And we've also designed that so that it's consistent with, uh, with, with Alexandria, so it was really the perfect place for them to land. Um, this is the growth path. As you can see in the beginning, it's very slow, but it steepens and, and grows very quickly to 25,000. That's roughly 2,000 employees a year. Just to give you an idea of the scale, last year, actually for the last four, five years in this region, we've gained 50,000 employees. So a couple of thousand employees really aren't going to make a difference. Um, but the key is how do we handle um, this, this new development that may come along to accompany it? Um, the great thing about this is what we realized is that we had this incredible partner in the state, and he's our, and actually Stephen has already gone over a lot of this. But one of the most important things to us was that seven hundred million dollars in new higher education and K through twelve funding. That's our future. That that's our you know I have grandkids. That's my grandkids. You know that's that's our kids. That's that that's the future. And if we do not create that pipeline. As a market, we're going to be in trouble. And in a way, what's happened is we're going to force all the region to act like us. Because you know what? You have to rise to the level of your competition. And, and they're ready for it. They really are ready for it. Um, I, I don't have to go through this. Actually, Stephen has already gone through this because this is the state by the numbers. But this is the impact for Arlington County. That first number up there, I mentioned 24,000 jobs lost, government jobs lost in Crystal City. 34,000 were lost in the whole county during that time. And, and so it, that's why we have so much empty office space. That's why revenues went down on the office side. And now there's this pressure on the residential side. We want to tilt that in the other direction, back where the commercial's paying more and the residents are paying less. We want to keep your taxes level or lower. That's really the goal. The unfortunate thing is the next two years are going to be a, a tough spot for all of us. You know, Even my department has taken budget cuts this year. But the key is this number here. 315 million net new dollars over the next 16 years. And that's net new, that's after all cost. Uh, oh, by the way, that's a 14 to one return. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that's pretty good. Uh, Virginia Tech, uh, we've, we've talked to Virginia Tech, we've worked with Virginia Tech, Alexandria. The Virginia Tech, I just said, rise to the level of your competition. You should hear the people at GMU right now. And by the way, I was with someone from, um, from Marymount University yesterday in a board meeting, and you know what he said? Oh, we want part of that. Arville, didn't he say that? That's what he said. <laughs> and I said, you're welcome, come on. The great thing about this is we're gonna get at least two tech campuses and maybe a third, which is really, I, I think that people are gonna have to worry about us in the future. Um, our, our, our incentive package, most of our money is going into transportation. That $570 million isn't all from Arlington. That's from Arlington and Alexandria combined. We did this as a joint proposal. 
Um, that 150 million, that's Arlington and Alexandria combined. 70 million from us, 80 million from them for affordable housing. The 28 million is from, from Arlington uh, for infrastructure. The only part that's going to the company is that 23 million at the bottom. That's why we get such a great return. 97% um, of, of our investment is in the community, um, not in the company. And again, that was following the example that, that Stephen set for all of us. And, um, the, you know, the Commonwealth is stepping up and, and helping us with our, with our transportation infrastructure, which we appreciate, along with the, that educational infrastructure. Um, we're, these, these strategic inv investments are really going to make this a, a great community um, to live, work, and play. Um, I'm really excited about all the, they really want to create active retail around every building. They, I mean, they, they really want to create a dynamic environment. They want to have the more mixed uses, more residents near the commercial or even combined. So that kind of thinking, and there's a proposal right now that was going to be 200 units in Crystal City that's now 800 units of residential. And so the market is already responding to the need. Um, we are going to go through our normal planning and zoning process. We talked to Amazon before we start, before we even got into anything, any discussion. We told them and we made it very clear to JBG, no special treatment. You got to go the Arlington way. That's, that's how we do business here. And they said, we love this community so much, we want to do it the Arlington way. We want to learn the Arlington way. I'm, I'm serious. They actually said these words. I mean, you know, frankly, you know, when I took them to meet the board members, uh, they were really selling uh, the board members on Arlington, which was funny. <laughs> kind of enjoyed that, actually. Um, so so our, our investment is the TOT tax, and like I said, that's a, a small amount compared to the rest. We've already started our, this is Arlington, we've already started our community engagement process. We've had about 20 of these events. Um, there are three going on tonight, one in, um, in, in Lyons, um, Lyons, Lions Park, Lions Park, Lions Park, and uh, Highlands, um, Arroyo Highlands, Arroyo Highlands, yeah. So, so there are multiple disease going on simultaneously. There'll be another one on Saturday. And our goal is to make sure that we communicate to you the facts and answer the questions that you have. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I really do appreciate working with you guys, even though you give me a hard time sometimes. <laughs> okay, now I would like to ask uh, Stephen and Victor to come up over to the dais, uh, to, uh, to the table next to me. Now we have a lot of people in case you didn't notice so I'm going to have to ask you to keep your questions brief and as always in Committee of 100 tradition please ask your question in the form of a question. Of a question. <laughs> uh, you don't have to know who I am. I'm Richard Barton. I've been involved in a lot of stuff here. Uh, I don't care about Crystal City. You can dump it. <laughs> I live in Tower Villas in Virginia Square in Boston, so I did have two Lovely. questions, and I didn't mean that about Crystal City. Um, first, uh, do you expect, would you expect, the, there's a lot of uh, uh, vacancies in business sections in Boston. Would you expect that to be uh, helped too? Number, and, and I know that there has been an announcement by George Mason that they're gonna restructure the old Kansas department store into 400 a lot of a big building what are they going to do there and what connection does that have with you okay great um, well first of all to answer your your first question the answer is yes um, we do expect um, Boston to benefit and and really fill a lot of vacancies and not just in their office buildings but also in their retail should I get closer better how about that okay Okay, so I'll start all over. So the, the answer to the question is yes. Um, we expect a, uh, quite a few vacancies to fill. What, what we've already noticed is that um, companies are signing leases that they've been thinking about signing, which makes a big difference, and kind of rushing into the market because they think that the prices are going to go up. Good. <laughs> You've been sitting around a long time. You might as well take action. Um, we expect that to create a lot of... Uh, pedestrian traffic on the on the streets. I walk, uh, my building is on, on Glebe Road, 1100 North Glebe, and I walk from there through the neighborhood all the way to GMU every day. It's my, it's my daily walk. And I know what you mean by a lot of those bays are empty. Uh, they will be filled up. The development at uh, GMU that they're thinking about doing is about a half million square feet. That's, that's roughly, I think, what they have, are able to build on that site um, by, by the zoning. Um, what they want to do is something different from their original plans. They want to make sure that this integrates into the community um, and it will have a, a tech focus. They want it to be both 
they want it to be commercial, residential, um, and um, and instructional and academic. So it'll be a, a three different uses. They really do um, expect to raise a lot of the money privately. 150 million they expect to raise privately, and there's a commitment from the state for 150 million match. Yes, I'm Charlie Clark. Uh, the the money is in a lot of different pots, state and private, and incentives and long term. I'm wondering if you can translate it to the annual Arlington budget, how much will it, would it rise to incentivize uh, Amazon? Well, it, it wouldn't rise at all to incentivize Amazon. The way that we designed this is we really took a hard look at our capital improvement plan, and we used that as our template. Um, essentially, what we're doing is we're accelerating um, some of the capital improvements, but we're not adding to those capital improvements. And then the um, the, the, the transit occupancy, that, two mil that $23 million that is going to um, Amazon directly, um, that's over a 16-year um, period. And during that 16-year period, which is the performance period, um, it's not coming from any existing revenues. It's coming from r new revenues that they will cause to happen. So we don't even have those revenues, but there'll be new revenues. And what we've decided to do is give them 15% of the new revenues. We'll take 85%, we'll give them 15%. I'm Gail Dennis, and I would like to have your comments on what's being done to avoid Arlington becoming the fiefdom of Bestos. Mm. Um, through through com campaign contributions, through them running their own people for the county board, and the county board being changed, the, the devastation of our longtime culture in Arlington, and through the purchase of, of desirable real estate in Arlington and the increase of the burden on the average citizen who now owns property. Thank you. I, I understand your question. Um, let, let me see if I understand what you're asking. That, um, that you believe that there's going to be some kind of change in the who's elected to the county board be, because they're here? Okay, so let me, let me just give you a couple of facts. Uh, first of all, of the 25,000 employees that are going to um, be Amazon employees, only 16% will be located in Arlington. And that's pretty consistent with all of our companies. We get about 15 to 20% of people that actually work for a company that live in town. So the number you're talking about is very small, and that is unlikely. And then Arlington has the Arlington way, and I doubt very seriously <laughs> if there's going to be any change in that. Um, given at least my experience over the last four years, um, I don't think that's going to happen. And you have people like Jay Facet, I'm sure, who are going to make sure that that doesn't happen. <laughs> I'm Charles Head. Um, Amazon doesn't have a great reputation in the Seattle area. Uh, for uh, dealing with local governments. Uh, they've uh, really got a bad rep on paying their people and on affecting the uh, overall wage structure. How was that considered in their impacts on Arlington? I think if you look closely at what's happened in Seattle, um, what you see is a community that experienced a tremendous amount of growth uh, because of Amazon. Uh, very high wage jobs, not unlike what it would be here, uh, in a community and a state that did not really plan adequately for that growth. I mean, that's the critical thing. Um, there have been, I, I suspect there are even articles out there about that. I can't say I've seen them, but it was very clear 10 years ago that this was a company that was growing very rapidly year after year after year. And I think one of the things, not to speak for Amazon, but I think it was pretty clear from this process that one of the catalyst for them to even consider a second or a third location uh, was that the community and the state were not keeping up with the infrastructure uh, and schools and, and affordable housing and so forth to deal with that growth. I mean, when you look at the numbers that Victor put on the board, a project like this generates an enormous amount of tax revenue, way beyond any reasonable estimate of what the cost would be. I think the problem that happened in Seattle is they just did not deal with the growth and so the community, the leadership there. Uh, and so ultimately, 
the question is, is that is it Amazon's fault that they created lots of jobs and opportunity for people? I don't think so. I think it was that the community didn't effectively deal with that growth, and that was a big catalyst for why they're coming here. Now, on, with that in mind, we were thinking, I mean, literally from the first week mm -hmm. that we, you know, 14, 15 months ago that we started talking about this project, we don't want to make that mistake for two reasons. Uh, one, we want, we want to win, uh, and we want to show them they're not going to be in that position if they come to Virginia, but secondly, we want to make sure for our own citizens that we don't have that problem. So one of the things that we started and, and formally, I would say, within two weeks of getting the RFP was really diving deep on transportation in particular, a great deal of modeling about the local level, regional level, state level, about what the impacts would be and what the projects would be. Uh, and that was done way back, I mean, 14 months ago, and then we, we did more detailed modeling the last few months, both at the state and local level. We looked at affordable housing uh, issues, and we looked at education issues. And what we made sure of the entire way, both the state and the local level, is that we were planning ahead, and that we made sure that when we thought about the, the ROI on the deal, we weren't just thinking about you know, new revenues versus incentives. We were thinking new revenues versus all new public obligations public schools, higher education, transportation infrastructure, and housing. That's not to say there won't be you know, growth pains, I'm sure there will be, um, but we wanna make sure we, we avoid the mistakes that, you know, that I think the city and the state made uh, in Washington, and not put a company that's creating you know, tens of thousands of six-figure jobs in the position of somehow being the bad guy because the city and the state you know, didn't do their job. Just one comment about the about the Arlington community and what is different about Arlington than Seattle. There, there, there are a number of things that are different. I mean, I can talk about the, the region itself. I mean, we're a region of 6 million people. We have a workforce of 3 million. They're a region of 3.8 million. They have a workforce of about 1.4 million. Their scale is not like our scale. I mean, we generate 50,000 jobs a year, every year. I mean, and, and no one, and there's only an incremental difference. So we're actually, in terms of size, it's, it's less of an impact. But even more important, Arlington as a community has a history of planning. And I don't mean just like, you know, gra you know like some kind of, you know, oh, we made a plan and it might happen. No, the metro, you told them, no, you're not putting that metro down our 66. You're going to put it underground. And by the way, we don't want you, like those buildings all over the county. We want them right at the metro station. You have 90% of all your commercial property on 14% of the land. That is incredible i'm a planner by i have a master's in city planning i love that i mean it was like a dream for me to come here and it's not it's not even that you did that 30 40 years ago it's what you do now i mean the plans that are in crystal city right now in place are three times of the the, the development capacity that amazon wants to do right now you did that you planned that in 2010 you planned that during a crisis you planned that when 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 the when the government was leaving we didn't know that Amazon would be one of the companies, Nestle would be one of the companies. We didn't know what company was coming, but you planned for it. Most jurisdictions don't do that, and that's a, that's a tremendous failure of leadership. But I will say this, you don't, you don't have that problem. That is not your problem. You, you have done it, and, and, and actually that's one of the things that, that all the folks at, at, um, at Amazon noticed was that we had planned for this and that we were ready for it. I'm Jennifer Owens, and I, my question, the one thing that doesn't seem consistent in this narrative is the budget um, shortfall that's happening this year that's causing some of the cuts. So to think about the way you just mentioned with Seattle and they didn't plan for the infrastructure to make themselves successful, and then to hear Victor say there'd be a reduction in the staff, even in his own department, which just did this very successful thing, I'm, I'm confused about why there isn't an investment now to make sure that we plan appropriately so we don't end up the way Seattle did. Jennifer, that's a great question. Um, th the most important thing to know is that uh, the budget Victor's talking about is the next year or the next two years. This 25,000 jobs of Amazon is 10 to 12 years. So next year is, I think, about 400 jobs. A year after that, 800,000, yeah. something like that. So it'll start to register, but it will not be an enormous employer next year, right? It won't even be in the top 10 or 20, probably, yeah. in the county. 10 years from now, it'll be huge. But the investments we're talking about are going to be made now. Right, the state is on an accelerated time frame for the two new metro entrances in Arlington and um, Potomac Yard. We'll be planning, doing all the planning for the other projects as well. The, the affordable housing things are happening now. Port. The bridge of the airport is happening now. So those <laughs> things are happening now. But the revenues from the project are essentially, for the county, correlated with the construction, and that's going to ramp up over a period of time. That's, that's the reason. The, it's timing. So short term, 
not as big of an impact, medium and long term, very big positive impact. Link Cummings. Arlington has been forward thinking, been planning for a number of years. We are the recipient now of, of a major new venture. What should we in this county, county, we who live here, what should we de be doing to prepare for and help this exciting new journey we're on? I've never been asked that question. <laughs> well, I think I think one of the one of the things that that you could do is um, make your concerns heard, and and I think you're doing that. Um, you know, whether they're positive, negative, you know, whether they're you know you need more information. I mean, for us, we want the constituents to understand. We want you to understand where we're going. Um, you, want, you want to know the direction we're going in. We want you to know that. So I think that part of it is just informing yourself. And, and you being here tonight, look, the first time I heard that there was a meeting that was going to start at 7 o'clock and it might not end until 10 o'clock. That might, this wasn't this one. It was another one. I was like, uh, wait a minute. I'm not waiting for the government. <laughs> You are so involved, you are so engaged, and I think that engagement is really what we need. We need that engagement. Again, I, am, I, am, I understand concerns. I have, them, I have my own concerns. I mean, I remember when my daughter was you know, finishing undergrad, I was concerned about, you know, you know where is she gonna get a job? You know, how is she gonna, is she gonna get married? I'm, I'm, in Bal I'm in Baltimore City, and I'm like, man, I gotta move. <laughs> And I'm serious. It was it was that kind of. A, and if that's your concern, I mean, because a lot of people are concerned about their kids living in their basement. We want to get them out of your basement, get them in an apartment, get them paying taxes. That's really that's really the goal. So whatever your concerns are, that's what we want. That's the that's really the greatest thing you can do for the board. The greatest thing you can do for the staff is to tell us how you feel about this coming. And 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 you know the second is be flexible because it's it, there may be a bumpy road. I mean, it's not going to be smooth. I mean, they're going, look, I've worked with all kinds of companies. I've worked with some of the greatest companies in this country. There's always a bumpy road. There's always a bump in the road because they have their goals and objectives, and sometimes they conflict directly with your goals and objectives. And that doesn't mean you don't resolve them. That means there is a conflict and there's a point of tension. Believe it or not, Stephen frowned at me once in 14 months. He did. He gave me a frown, okay? And... And frankly, I felt so bad. I said, Stephen, you know, what's wrong? What's wrong? Oh, no, I was reading an email. <laughs> God, I feel so much better now. But, but I wanted the feedback. I mean, you know, I want to know, I wanna know what, is, what is your pain point because I don't want, I, I, you know, but there, there, there was a point of tension there for me, not for him. But sometimes it's just communication. And, if there, and listen, you are not the only ones that are concerned about, you know, what's going to happen in Arlington, and you want a great future for Arlington. We want it too, and we want to make sure it's your, your vision. My name is uh, Mark Scarano, and I'm with Community Business Partnership down in Springfield, and um, I'm a new uh, Arlington resident, and <laughs> awesome, I love it. The, uh, and I'm also a taxpayer, so I really appreciate all the work you guys did <laughs> on, on this. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the ripple effect of Amazon's investment on small businesses, not only in Arlington, but in Northern Virginia? One of the great things about a project like this is that it's what we call traded sector, which means that the vast majority of revenues that support this headquarters are coming from outside of the market. And that means the vast majority of the money is new money coming into the market, new payroll, new purchases at uh, local retailers, at restaurants, and so forth. When you look at the the small businesses in Arlington and Northern Virginia, the vast majority of them, 70 plus percent, get almost all their revenues within this region. Their growth to a large extent is constrained by how the vitality and the growth of this market as a whole. As, as Victor was saying, you think about a lot of those local retailers in the Crystal City area, how many of them went out of business, how many of them were struggling to survive with the loss of tens of thousands of government jobs over time. So you're gonna, I don't have the, the numbers off the top of my head, but you're gonna see, um, I mean, it's, an, it's, it's billions of dollars in new sales for small business. I mean, think about it this way. The, this project at full ramp, it will be about $3.8 billion of payroll, direct payroll uh, every year. All of those people are gonna have some kind of housing that they're gonna buy or rent 
They're going to eat at restaurants. They're going to use coffee. local retailers, buy cars, buy coffee, and so forth. Um, it'll, it'll create a tremendous impact for those local businesses. Um, we estimate that at least 22,000, I think is likely a much, much bigger number, but an absolute minimum of 22,000 new permanent indirect jobs and induced jobs at retailers and local businesses throughout the region, just in Virginia, not including D.C. and Maryland. Uh, it's likely to be considerably higher than that. So you're going to see a lot of positive impacts, new sales, new uh, growth opportunities for small businesses in the area. And by the way, I would encourage everyone, um, there's a couple websites out there. We have a website we built together. Uh, it's www.hqnova.com, hqnova.com. It's got not only the proposal that we made to Amazon, but there's a very extensive set of kind of FAQs, essentially, if you have any, you know, lots of detailed answers on housing, transportation projects, and so forth. Uh, if you want to know about more about the incentives and the economic impact, all that's out there. If you want the actual agreement with the state and the company, exactly. that's down there for a download. All the transportation projects are out there. Uh, we've really worked together. I think there's also a local site yep. uh, as well. I don't yes. remember the address for that one, but yes. it's probably uh, off the H homepage. H HQ2 um, Nova. HQ2 Nova? Yeah. yeah. It was on the slide, but yeah. yeah. I'll answer your question. Dot com. My name is John Quinn. I'm interested in knowing who first proposed the split between Northern Virginia and New York City, and at what point did that uh, decision get communicated to you folks, and what impact did it have on the planning that you've been disclosing? No, great question. Um, for, for the vast majority of the, the – it was basically a 14-month process. We actually asked them early on, let's say maybe a month or two in, is there any chance you might split this up? <laughs> uh, maybe part of D.C., part of Northern Virginia, something yeah. like that. And they said, absolutely not. Um, I think we don't know for sure what drove the decision. It happened, I'd say, well, the final decision, I think, happened right before the, the announcement. But I think they were seriously considering it roughly two months before. We found out about six to eight weeks before the announcement that they were considering that. But they had not actually decided for sure right up until the last minute. In fact, it wasn't until the day before when That's Victor right. and I got the call that they said it's two locations. If you look at our agreement, it was actually envisioned to, to go either way. Um, I don't know who made the decision. We believe that it was influenced by two factors. One is that um, there's, a very, there's a big challenge nationally and globally in tech talent. And certainly the D.C. metro, largely northern Virginia, and the New York City area are the, roughly the two biggest tech talent markets in the East Coast along with Boston. And by splitting it up, they kind of increase their chances of being able to meet their needs. I think secondly, kind of building off of the concern uh, raised by, I think it was Mr. Head earlier, when they thought about the impacts on transportation and housing and so forth, I think they felt like it would be a bit more manageable for the communities that they split it in half. Um, from my perspective, I would have loved to have gotten the whole thing, but we were thrilled to get um, half of it. And look, there's no question it's going to be easier to absorb at half the size. Now, what, what really made it... Um, easier to accept was at almost the same time that they said it was going to be split in two or they were considering splitting it in two. They said that the wage average instead of 100,000, which we had been modeling, it's 150,000. We did not increase our offer, right? So that was all just extra profit uh, for the state and the locality uh, at that period of time. So a great outcome. We, we ended up getting um, roughly 75, uh, actually exactly 75% of the payroll that was originally envisioned, even though they split it in half because of the higher wages. Hi, I'm Gail Raymond, and my question is, what do each of you consider to be the biggest challenge facing uh, the success of this project? Oh, we're going to go first. <laughs> got to think about that. You're a guest. Each of you. <laughs> I mean, this is not a fair answer because it's not a direct answer to your question, but the thing that comes to mind is, if you were to say, what's the thing I'm most worried about, which is a little different than that, it, it's that... Um, we, there's a lot of things that are going really well in Virginia. You know, we're top of so many lists. We're wealthy, low poverty, great schools and all that. Um, I worry a little bit that we'll get a little complacent. That was my fear really from the first months I got here. It's my fear today that there, there's more that we should be doing. This community is incredible. But statewide, there's a lot of things we ought to be doing to position Virginia for more diverse growth that we're not doing yet. And I worry a little bit that when you have a huge win like this, people think, okay, well, you can outgrow it. That's checked off. That's the thing I'm worried about. Um, if I had to pick something as a challenge uh, relative to the project itself, 
I think it's mostly just making sure that, we, look, we, we spent 14 months trying to think through every aspect of this, not just winning, but how do we win in a way that is a long-term win? Not just the announcement, but that the community accepts it, that it integrates with the growth plans, that we've really thought through all the education issues and housing and so forth. So I think for me, it's really just making sure that the collective we, local partners, state, the universities, the, the company, that we make good on all the commitments that we made to each other. And I think if we do that, we're gonna have a great outcome. One of the things that we're doing to help make that happen is in the agreement is the creation of a partnership steering committee that's envisioned to sort of live through the entire 20 years of the agreement. Um, Arlington will have two or three seats on that. The state will be represented, transportation, Virginia Tech, uh, Northern Virginia Community College, um, uh, Alexandria will be on there, the, the developer, the company. Uh, and the intent is to get this group together regularly and make sure that you know leaders are going to change. We probably, hopefully, will be together most of the yeah, 20 years. So. <laughs> but you know there will be changes over time. And the the goal here, partly again going off of Mr. Head's comments earlier, was how do we avoid the mistakes of Seattle and trying to really stay ahead of those issues. I'm sorry that wasn't a direct answer, but those are things that come to mind. Jay Fassett, uh, comment and then a question. Um, when I was chair of the board in 2005 is when we were surprised by BRAC and we had to deal with lo the loss of 17,000 jobs in Crystal City. And then we did what Arlington does, which is plan. So I really appreciate that Victor spoke to the planning. That is something that we should all be really proud of and I set, think set the stage and the tone. As we deal with the housing, affordable housing and transportation, those plans will come to play as will adoption of each project, each building along the way. My question is about regionalism. <clears throat> Because I think Amazon needs a lot, of, deserves a lot of credit. As a regionalist, we don't want this 25,000 people off in a field 25 yard, uh, miles from a metro. <laughs> they chose to be where the infrastructure is. That is huge and not to have been presumed. But what do you see as the opportunities and the challenges to the greater Washington metropolitan region from this decision by Amazon? Well, just to just to touch on that, so of all the economic development officials in this region, I am the most regional in that it is what I've done in terms of my practice. I've worked in every jurisdiction in this region. I've worked in Virginia. I've worked in D.C. I'm deputy mayor in D.C. I was assistant secretary of economic development in Maryland, uh, secretary of housing in Maryland. I've worked in private sector in all of those markets, too, when I was uh, at, a, at a real estate firm on, um, on Wall Street. The bottom line is that I believe in it and I acted on it. So four years ago when I got here, and I, I talked to the chair about, the former chair, um, about this, um, and the board members that, um, that I was gonna reach out to Washington, D.C., Montgomery County, Prince George's County, and work with them. I said, they may say you no, know, but I'm gonna try. And that has turned from, you know, you're kinda silly, you know, you're kind of namby-pamby, you know, that's a real nice thing, you know, kinda pat me on the head, to, this is how we work now. On the economic development level, we work. And it's actually how the region now works. I cannot believe a transportation package that had been worked on for 20 years finally worked. You need something, you need a catalyzing event. The catalyzing event for right now for us, the transformational event for us right now is Amazon. It is just a, it is just a thing that is going to make people think differently. You, we're not gonna be the same 10 years from now. We can't now. Um, it offers an opportunity that is that is limitless if we if we embrace it the right way, um, and I think that regionalism is the way you need to embrace this. Really quickly, 16% of the people will probably live in, according to Fuller study, in Arlington. 33% will live in Fairfax. 15% will live in D.C. Only 6% will live in Alexandria. They're going to be all over the region, just like Nestle was, just like every one of the companies that come here. It already, we already are regional. It's just that we need to cooperate more. And that's my regional pitch. First of all, thank you so much, Stephen and uh, Victor, for providing great overview and uh, brainstorming some scenes and some scenes that, of course, you predicted and you know very well. Uh, my name is Elena Keith, and I'm with you, our citizen, US Congress, I work with. And the question is, okay, 500,000 square feet Amazon headquarters. 22,000 jobs anticipated coming into the area. Supporting businesses, auxiliary businesses. Are we ready as Arlington County and planning and zoning division to be able to rezone areas which are right now zoned as residential 
high density, low density, commercial, and such. Like what, what, what's, uh, what, what, what's going on there? Yeah, so mostly. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, most of this is already planned. Um, th that's what we were talking about earlier. Actually, uh, Jay Fassett and, and, the, um, and the board and the Crystal City, um, actually the entire Crystal City community, I think they did 98 meetings for that 2010 plan. Um, so it's already in the plan. It's not, it will be nothing new. And by the way, it's, it's four to six million square feet um, in total when, they, when they're built out. It's actually planned for somewhere around eight to 12 million square feet. So the, the development envelope is much larger than what they are going to bring. And we currently have a lot of vacant office space and a lot of that will be reused. So it, it's, a pretty, it's a pretty straightforward for, for being in Crystal City. Now, if it was in Boston, it couldn't have been done. That's why we didn't select a site in Boston. And if it were in Roslyn, it would have been possible, but it would have been complicated. Um, and that's why they didn't choose Roslyn. They looked at Roslyn. We never even showed them Boston because it just didn't have enough development capacity. Really, the logical solution was really a Crystal City, Pentagon City, um, Potomac Yards. And that was really the, the, the simple, straightforward solution. Well, all good things have to come to an end. Uh, please keep your seats for a couple of announcements. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank our speakers, Victor and Stephen. Uh, next month, we'll be talking about Nazism's history in Arlington. Our speaker will be Charlie Clark, who's right over here. Charlie? Yay! So make your reservations now at, uh, at www.arlingtoncommitteeof100.org. I'd also like to thank the program committee for putting tonight's program together. Thanks, as always, to the to the county to the committee of 100 board directors, to Anita. Jeannie and Marjorie for working the front desk, and of course for George for selling the drink tickets. <laughs> uh, thanks also to the Marymount Special Events team and Arlington Independent Media's technical crew. Uh, as a reminder, you can watch tonight's program on AIM's cable channel and on YouTube. Um, and of course, thanks to all of you for, t for coming and participating. Um, if you have any questions be, that you'd rather not fill out on these forms, just please see one of us with the ribbon beneath our name tags. And speaking of name tags, please drop them off on your way out. Thank you again, and we look forward to seeing you next month.